thank you very much for coming out and um, getting the word out about fire restrictions. Um, we're doing a multi-jurisdictional news conference, and that's so that the public will have a better understanding of the fire um, restrictions from one jurisdiction to the next. Um, and really what this does is demonstrates the high-functioning relationship that exists between jurisdictions today and the coordination, the sharing of resources, and, and that results in really increased operational effectiveness. And it's important for you to understand that fuel conditions and fuel models differ from one jurisdiction to the next. In the Albuquerque metro area, there's been a lot of fuel thinning. And so the fuel models differ. The fire risk differs in our jurisdiction when you compare it to areas that are north of the city or south of the city. Um, so that said, I'd like to introduce uh, Mayor Richard J. Berry um, to make some opening remarks. Mayor? Yes, Chief. Yes, sir. Chief Breen, thank you so much. Um, I want to echo what Chief said. We, we have a, a great natural resource here. Uh, this is a generational resource. And as a mayor, I get a chance on a, almost a daily basis to see this multi-jurisdictional effort uh, between the state, national, county, uh, the conservancy district, uh, open space division, all the people that are here today, the Albuquerque Fire Department, working to make sure that we keep the Bosque safe. And uh, this year, uh, we are actually going into stage two restrictions almost a month earlier than we did last year. And uh, so that's why the city of Albuquerque and the Bernalillo County uh, are going to be increasing our, our cautionary fire level to stage two fire restrictions and portions of the Middle Rio Grande Conservancy District will be, be closing effective tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock a.m. As you are aware, it's been a very dry winter and spring and now because of the drought conditions, it's necessary that we all participate in taking a proactive role in preventing fires. Uh, I mentioned earlier last year we started this uh, in, uh, in j late June. This year we're starting it in late May. So here's what stage two fire restrictions do. They limit the activities of contractors uh, in the Bosque. Fire restrictions will apply to all open space areas within the municipal boundaries of the city of Albuquerque and Bernalillo County to include the West Mesa grasslands, the Bosque and the open space areas of the Sandia foothills. Uh, stage two uh, restrictions prohibit uh, fire, open flames of any kind, camp stoves, ovens, uh, smoking is, is prohibited now, uh, possessing discharging of any kind of firework or any uh, uh, pyrotechnic device of any kind is prohibited, possessing the use of a motor vehicle uh, or using a motor vehicle off any publicly designated roadways except when parking in developed parking lots or at developed trailheads. Operating a chainsaw is prohibited as well operating any piece of spark emitting equipment. That could include anything from, of course, ATVs, motorcycles, anything that emits a spark is now prohibited. Operating any external combustion engine, welding certainly is prohibited, and camping in overnight stays. And we want to make sure people take this seriously because it's, you know, there are penalties involved. This is a misdemeanor if you are caught. That could be $500 and up to 90 days in jail. Uh, but the fact is, uh, over and above that, we just want to make sure we take care of this beautiful and great natural resource that we have in the city. Uh, we also want people to be aware that if they see anything suspicious at all, you can call 242 COPS, let us know immediately. Uh, this is about having eyes and ears out here in the Bosque and in this great wilderness area to make sure that if something is going on that's inappropriate, that we find out about it quickly. We've got many, many friends here that are working with us. I know uh, uh, Mayor Gasteyer is here from Corrales as well, and I uh, know they're keeping a close, uh, close eye on this as well. So if we can just all work together, uh, be responsible, use our common sense, uh, we'll get through, uh, get through this dry period, but it's, uh, it's time to put these restrictions into place. And I just want to end on another note, just thanking everybody that's here. This is, uh, it's amazing to see as a mayor, everybody that gets together and, uh, and, and works to protect this great uh, natural asset that we have. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the mayor from the village of Corrales, Phil Gaster. Did I get it right? <laughs> Not quite. Yeah. Uh, Phil Gaster is the way we pronounce it. Um, I, uh, I am pleased to, uh, to join in the effort today and, and the cooperation. You know, Corrales is a small community, uh, but we do have seven miles of Bosque Forest uh, Preserve, and we also have seven miles of riverfront. And we've had two uh, nearly catastrophic wildfires in the last four years in Corrales, and a huge amount of thanks goes to these folks behind me and the cooperative effort uh, that came from the MRGCD, which is the landowner, but also from all of the neighboring uh, public safety uh, personnel. It was uh, 
uh, it enabled us to preserve our community. And so it, uh, I'm happy again to join in the effort today uh, so that we have consistent and coherent restrictions. In Corrales, we've already passed a no burn uh, resolution that's in effect through the end of the summer. And we've passed under the awkward state law, we've passed a fireworks uh, sale and use ban uh, in the Corrales in, in recent meetings of our of our village government. So we're happy again to uh, be part of this effort. I thank uh, those of you in the news media who found it uh, uh, time and uh, space to get this uh, message out to uh, people throughout the whole Albuquerque metropolitan area. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and again, I'm James Breen, Chief of the Albuquerque Fire Department. Um, I do want to speak a little bit about our jurisdiction and um, really want the public to be fire wise. And so we have some safety tips for you. Um, we want people to be vigilant, vigilant and use common sense when they're dealing with open flames or ignition sources of any type. Um, homeowners that live near an open space area, whether it's the Foothills, the West Mesa, or the Bosque, they need to create a defendable space around their property. And they should do that to remove any dead vegetation, uh, ladder fuels, or dead branches that are um, on the lower branches of a tree or a shrub. Um, and the public should be especially cautious on red flag warning days. These are the days where it's hot, it's dry, and we have windy conditions. And that's a, that's a condition where fire can really grow quickly and get out of control. So on those days, people need to be especially cautious. Um, given that there's a lot of different, different jurisdictions with different types of fire restriction levels, know where you're going before you visit there. Get on their websites. Um, or talk to the park rangers before you enter to find out what the fire restrictions are. Another good tip is to supervise your children. Discuss the fire danger um, at one of your family meetings um, so that your children know how to prevent fires in the first place. And of course, discourage the use of any types of fireworks um, in any type of open space area, and especially the, the illegal types. And if you see suspicious activity, um, of any type, and that could be an open flame, someone that's violating the fire restrictions of that area, maybe operating gas-fired equipment, um, smoking or camping, um, anything like that, call that number 242-COPS um, or the number that's unique to your jurisdiction. <clears throat> Additionally, I just want to say the Bosque and the Foothills, they're really a wonderful recreational resource for our community. And we have to all work together in preventing these wildland fires so that we can protect this great natural resource for future generations. With that said, I'd like uh, Bernalillo County Fire Marshal Chris Gober to come up and say a few words. Chris, you too. Sir. Uh, Chris Gober, Bernalillo County Fire Marshal. I just want to re reiterate what's already been said on open burning restrictions. Um, Bernalillo County, we have a zero tolerance for that. So if somebody's caught uh, burning their weeds or having a campfire in the backyard, using charcoal barbecue grills, that sort of thing. Uh, we will be writing notes of hazards, issuing citations. We are increasing our patrols as we get into the more uh, fire season and the danger increases on a daily basis. Uh, also, I want to reiterate the defensible space issue. People need to go uh, clean out their gutters of the dry leaves, the dry pine needles, uh, move your winter firewood off the porch, move it into away from the house, at least 20 feet away from the house. Uh, keep your grasses mowed, keep the grasses watered, that sort of thing. And again, if you guys see anything suspicious or out of the ordinary uh, in Bernalillo County, please call 911 uh, and we can get the crews out there right away. Thank you, Chris. The Middle Rio Grande Conservancy District spans many jurisdictions, both north and south of the city. And here to speak um, on their behalf is Chairman Derek Lenti. Good morning, and before I begin, I'd like to recognize also a director from Valencia County, Mr. Uh, Johnny Pice, is here with me as well. Um, and before I begin as well, condolences to all of those in Oklahoma um, on the tragedy, and I think this goes to show the, um, the sheer force that Mother Nature has to, in minutes, flatten the city. And in two, in other parts of the country, where we're at now, um, bring us to our knees with the, the unprecedented drought that we have right now. And that being said, the Middle Rio Grande Conservancy District um, deals and handles with all of the irrigation waters for the Middle Rio Grande Valley. And it's this time of year that uh, a lot of our farmers, we at the district, are looking forward to a new growing season, a new, uh, a new planting season, the beginning of life, the continuation of a culture and heritage for a lot of our people in the valley. But um, 
continuously, at least for the third year in a row, we're now looking at uh, restrictions with regards to fire danger. And that being said, a um, meeting was had last week on Wednesday, and decision was made that effective tomorrow, uh, May the 22nd at 8 o'clock in the morning, the Middle Rio Grande Conservancy District will in fact close its portion of the Bosque areas that it owns. And when I say what it, what it owns, it owns a majority of the Bosque areas from Cochiti Reservoir all the way down to the Bosque del Apache Refuge south of Socorro. Uh, that's about 30,000 acres of cottonwood forest. Um, it's touted as the largest, of the, the world's largest cottonwood, contiguous cottonwood forest spans 150 river miles and so it's certainly we have a lot to lose if, if fire does in fact happen um, this restriction does not and will not be implemented on pueblo lands there's also six pueblos within the within the district uh, it will not also include the uh, Civilleta, um national wildlife refuge or the bosque del apache wildlife refuge um, or the state game refuge as well um, our closure is a little bit different than the stage two fire restrictions that the city of albuquerque has imposed by way of our closure is complete, meaning that uh, we will not have anybody come in or out um, of our of our areas that we have um, that we own. Um, I know I realized that last year there was a lot of people that were concerned about this because uh, of their business of rafting or the fact that they like to, to use the, the trails to jog, hike, whatever it might be. But the fact of the matter is that last year, um, in fact, in in, in Mayor Gastire's neck of the woods, the Romero fire started and quickly jumped over the river to a place that I call home, Sandia Pueblo. And uh, that came really close and hit really hard to home. And uh, the idea is that if you have eyes in the bosque, it's gonna help control the, the, the danger of fire. But we'd rather err on the side that if we have no one in the bosque, hopefully nothing will happen by accident. Uh, I, I think last year it was, it was determined that the fire was started by an electronic cigarette by people working in the bosque to help prevent fires. So that being said, um, uh, the, the Bosque closure will in fact happen again beginning tomorrow and we'll go through May 31st um, at which time we will then reevaluate the conditions of the forest and if need be if we don't get any rains or any type of considerable moisture we will have to continue the Bosque closure until uh, a time's appropriate that we all feel that, that we can open it back up again. And at the same time, we appreciate all of the hard work and effort of the people standing behind me. This, in fact, is a um, multi-governmental uh, agency um, collaboration, and uh, hopefully we can do this to hopefully protect lives and, and property and uh, protect the, the forest that we all cherish. So thanks again. Now to speak on behalf of the New Mexico State Forestry Department, Dan Ware. Good morning. On behalf of New Mexico State Forester, Tony Delphine, I'd like to express our appreciation for the partnerships that we have with all of our local, uh, state, and federal agencies. Uh, New Mexico State Forestry uh, looks forward to working with all of the agencies this year should the need arise. We hope it doesn't. Um, it bears reminding that all of New Mexico state forestry jurisdiction lands, those are non-municipal, non-federal, and non-tribal, are currently under restriction. This includes state parks, uh, state wildlife refuge areas, fire restrictions are in place, and all open burning, smoking, fireworks, uh, campfires are prohibited at this time. There are exceptions in some cases, and for an explanation on what those exceptions might be, I encourage everyone to log on to nmforestry.com and click on the wildfire announcements link for a full explanation of the fire restrictions and what exceptions may be granted by the state forester. Once again, I would urge everyone planning to travel this weekend to know before you go check out fire restriction, the new fire restriction website, firerestrictions.us, for information on state, local, and federal fire restrictions. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. <coughs> and from Valencia County, Fire Chief Steve Gonzalez. Good morning, Fire Chief Steven Gonzalez, Valencia County, uh, here to address the constituents of Valencia County. We are on full uh, Bosque restrictions following uh, New Mexico State Forestry. We are on a uh, full open burn ban as well, camping fires, uh, smoking, 
uh, cultural burns, all, everything like that. We are on full restriction within Valencia County. We did take it one level higher than Bernalillo County and Albuquerque, uh, being that our bosque in our area is extremely dense through the Valencia County and Northern, Soco uh, Northern Socorro County areas. So we did uh, wanted to be proactive through Valencia County and ensure that we uh, protect our wildlife and all of our uh, areas within the bosque area of Valencia County. Uh, thank you for having me here today. And in closing, um, we stand united, um, both land management agencies and fire departments across the state of New Mexico. Um, but we really need the public's help in being firewise and preventing these fires and reporting suspicious activity. Um, I'm a proud fire chief, and I'd like to showcase um, our newest uh, wildland fire apparatus. Um, Jeremy Hansen's here to talk to any reporters that may want to um, ask about that particular piece of equipment. Also, all these agencies um, uh, represented here today, if you want to talk to anyone individually, um, we'll all hang out for a few minutes for that purpose. Chief, could you talk about, I take it Albuquerque is not included in the Bosque closure? No, we are, we are doing a type or a stage two restriction um, in that basically no ignition sources will be allowed in the Bosque. Um, even under permitted condi conditions. And that means no smoking, no gas-powered equipment, no campfires, no um, overnight camping. Um, to the north and to the south of us, there are some uh, greater restrictions or closures. And again, know before you go, visit the applicable website to find out what the actual closures or restrictions are.